All right, so welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin. I'm Tarsha. This is Conversations with the Crawleys. We do conversations about faith, family, relationships, and whatever else we feel like talking about. So if this is content that you enjoy, you know what to do by now. Hit that subscribe. Hit the like, request notifications. And share. We'll see you in the comments. Consider becoming a member and checking out the merch store. Um, this one is all about the latest episode of the Never Ever Mets. I think we're on episode 8, mm -hmm. 7, 12, something like that. Sounds like a fairy tale song. Yeah, it does. It I does know. sound like a fairy tale title, but this ain't no fairy tale. This might be a Grimm's fairy tale. Okay. You know, Grimm's fairy tales was a little grim sometimes mm -hmm. when you, you know, wasn't all just roses and running off with the prince. Folks lost their lives in Grimm's right. fairy tales. Mm -hmm. um, off with your head. Right. <laughs> Kids being baked in ovens. And right, whatnot. right. Like, this is a child story. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Are we telling kids about yeah. yeah? Oh, that's that's the original. Don't jump into, you know, don't talk to strangers yes. and don't jump into vans. Don't jump into ovens and eat cow houses of candy. Right. All right. And some of y'all newer generation may not know those, so <laughs> we're telling our age. All right. Anyway, let's talk about what y'all came here to, to <laughs> listen to. Y'all to hear us want to ramble about fairy, fairy tales. tales. Um, so last episode, we know that Josh, well, Shay was given news by Diamond about potentially Josh trying to step out with Alexis, who was mm -hmm. there for all of like five minutes mm -hmm. the very first night. Mm -hmm. um, so they're picking back up with that. Mm -hmm. And Josh, I think, does a good job of trying to bring her back to reality. Mm -hmm. He's like, if I if I was honest with you about what I did do with having, you know, having the child during our 12 years that we've been connecting, why would I lie to you now about some some random young woman who we just met who is in the house for all of 12 minutes. Right. And I and I get it from her perspective. Mm -hmm. So she trusted you. You stepped out on her. So again, she don't want to look like a fool. Right. She don't want to be embarrassed because now you're doing it in my presence or behind my back, potentially, right? But, but in my vicinity, right? right? Right, right. So that makes it worse, especially if now we've made a physical connection along Because they've been them. using that boom, boom room. Like. They've been using that boom. they like making up for 12 years. <laughs> 12 years. It's been 12 years. So. Oh, well, maybe 12 years for her. So, but with that being the case, obviously automatically that puts her back in that mindset right. of feeling betrayed, you know, and everything. Even though, I, you're right. I think he did uh, just, you know, the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, look at my track record. Right. Again, we don't know this young lady. We don't even know if what Diamond said is exactly what the young lady said. We got questions about that. We got questions about that. But she was like, you're right. So, because Shay's like, yeah, this is kind of too good to be true, right? Mm -hmm. But she's like, I don't know Diamond. I don't know Alexis. And that's the thing you mm -hmm. have, she had to bear in mind. She's like, I don't know any of these folks. So let's mm -hmm. stop acting like we are best friends. And that'll mm -hmm. come into play a little later. Mm -hmm. um, she's like, she's going to trust what she knows, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, and if you've watched one of our, our recaps, we do talk about the couple's and everything that happened with them. So just continuing, not that in format. Uh, that format. Um, the next day, um, Josh and Shay are talking about they're going to get, or Josh is telling the fellas, a couple of the fellas, mm -hmm. that they're planning on getting matching tattoos, mm -hmm. which that's a commitment, right? Yeah, that's a commitment. Um, yeah, well, I guess we'll talk about a little bit later as we yeah. go, <laughs> go so on. So he brings up what Diamond said, and he says this. He says, you live long if you mind your business. Mm -hmm. Now, that's some street stuff right there. That's some street stuff. <laughs> that's some straight up street that's stuff. That's street wisdom to That me. is some street wisdom. <laughs> uh, not that he was making a threat. Let's not say that. But it is. It's it, true. It is true. You, you, I think that the more you stay out of other folks' business, yes. especially, you don't know what they got going on. Thank you. Uh, you know, or you, and sometimes it may not be that you live longer, but you keep your job. <laughs> Shout out to all the people that have been, you know, hassling black people when they just live in life. Okay. Losing your job. All right. So anyway, um, Shay asks Diamond, why did Alexis bring it up now? Mm -hmm. And so based upon something else that was said a little later, um, it looks like, granted, we're on episode eight, I think it is. Mm -hmm. But as of this time of what this when this was happening, they had been in the house for maybe about 12 days. Mm -hmm. So all of this that we're seeing is really about 10, 12 days mm -hmm. of activity. And it's festering. That's festering. She also is like, well, Alexis has her number. Why didn't Alexis call her? Mm -hmm. Which is a great question. Mm -hmm. 
Because again, if if Alexis is that concerned and if this actually happened to Alexis and you saying you want to talk to Shay, you got her number. Call her. So there's that. Um, the other thing, one of you all in the comments reminded us that uh, Diamond, when she got in the house, said something to the effect of she doesn't she doesn't like dealing with women because women are messy. Mm-hmm. She was really kind of talking she, about herself. She was self prophesying because mm-hmm. she messy. Mm-hmm. Her and her 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 boo or whatever his name is, mm-hmm. Aaron. Yeah, him. Um, so then a little later, they have the group activity, right? Mm-hmm. It's called the hot seat. The hot seat. And so the premise of it is, is that um, each couple sits in the hot seat. The other couples can ask questions since the producers like, well, since everybody in everybody else's <laughs> business anyway, let's make this a part of the episode. Well, and there is some validity yes. to other couples that are in proximity to you and they're actually living together. They may see some things that, you may not be seen. True. So in a in an environment that's more controlled and someone can moderate what's going on, mm-hmm. it's good for you to ask questions like, I just want you to think about this. Right. To make sure you're on the same page with the person you are, you're trying to connect with. Mm-hmm. So um we she says Shay says that she says that she does trust Josh. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, but something else was that she says her mother does not know about Josh. Yeah, I don't know what she means by that. Are we saying she don't know he exists, or she don't she don't know that they got back together? The way it came off, and let us know how I it came like, off to you. Uh, the way it came off to me was her mother doesn't know that this is a, an important part of her life. That this is a man that she's yeah. in a relationship of whatever kind, because she goes on to say. Because it's virtual and she wants them to meet in person, right? So it sounds as if if she does know Josh's name, it's just my friend Josh. Um, but it doesn't sound like it's even that. It sounds like mama don't know that she might have a son-in-law in a couple of weeks. Now, that's kind of like why. I would, mm-hmm. I would, That's a big question for me. Yes. You know, you were with this person, obviously, they had a child, mm-hmm. and then now y'all got back together. Mm-hmm. In total, that's twelve years. Yeah, and you, this dude didn't come up to your mom once. You didn't say, "Hey, I'm serious about somebody." Mm-hmm. Like, granted, you haven't seen ver- you didn't haven't seen them in person, right? But at some point, you should say, "I am dating somebody," and it's virtual. And plus, you about you done left where you are to go to this show that That's you filmed. That's what I'm saying. I'd be like, where are you going and why are you going? Right. So I would, I feel like there was should have been some level. Some conversation. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what I was saying. She don't know they got back together. Mm-hmm. She don't know that they're serious. Like, I feel like something's missing. Yeah. But, okay. So a little later, Shay is on the phone with one of her friends mm-hmm. recapping kind of what happened with Diamond and the mm-hmm. whole thing. And she's venting to her friend. Mm-hmm. And again, the way it's the way it's edited. edited and shown, it's almost like Aaron H is ear hustling mm-hmm. and tries to, you know, basically makes comments about her conversation. Mm-hmm. First of all, again, stop arguing with women. That that ain't a good look. It's not. Firstly. Secondly, she talking to her friend. Get out their conversation. You and everybody else's conversation, get out their conversation. Thirdly, she's not wrong. You and your girl are doing some messy stuff and doing some childish stuff. And I'll, I'll address mm-hmm. more than I've, I've, mm-hmm. I've concerns with them. So lot later on, the other thing is that they are, I guess they, they did get the budget extended a little. So the producers were <laughs> like, we can go ahead and get the expert. We can get additional sessions with the expert. Right. So Josh and Shay do meet with the expert. Mm-hmm. And um, Shay does talk about how she used to cuss him out. She used to get angry. Mm-hmm. She's working on her anger. Mm-hmm. Josh makes a statement that I was like, okay, that's the maturity, whether you all realize it or not. Mm-hmm. He says, we've argued a thousand times. What's one more? Mm-hmm. In other words, Arguing, we don't like to admit it, but arguing is 
sometimes part of a relationship. Now, there can be, of course, excessive arguing and toxic arguing, what have mm-hmm. you. But disagreements, when you have two different people from do, two different backgrounds trying to make a life together, there are going to be dis- some disagreements, but it's how you handle that. Right. So he's handling it like, yeah, we, we argue, we've gotten over it, mm-hmm. let's continue to move forward. And Shay is like, where she, whereas she recognizes that her anger sometimes got the better of her, mm-hmm. she's also saying, I'm working on that because she wants to build something too, is what I get. And like in this situation that just occurred, she knew, she's like, look, I have to do a better job because mm-hmm. in this situation, after we, after I was able to calm down and realize that, okay, I don't know what happened. I got to believe the person that I'm in the relationship with because they've shown me a track record right. that we've built back our trust. As opposed to these people I just met. Right. So. So. All right. So that was them. Let's deal with uh, Jody and Aaron. Mm. Um, don't really see anything of them until the, uh, uh-huh, the group see. activity, right? Mm-hmm. And they are, like, fighting over the good side of the couch. She's like, let me sit on this side. That's my good side. He's like, say, please. <laughs> Say pretty please with sugar on top. <laughs> She's like, please. <laughs> it was like, it was tense. Well, I don't know when the group activity happened and when the photo shoot happened, but I'm like, my God, how can you say that tight wine? I mean, like she was so tightly wine. Like, was it just the other day they had the photo shoot? And she still had that energy the following day. That's exhausting. It is. Because the other thing that came up was they were asked, do you all see it long term? He says, yeah, long term. She says, term. I was. She's given clues. She's trying to say she's not interested. And he's trying to fight for something that is not worth it anymore. Yeah. You want someone to reciprocate. And when people are not reciprocating, some people keep trying. And sometimes it's like, you know what? It's okay. Mm-hmm. Just let them go. Just let it go. Um, so they the question is comes up as far as, like, do they see themselves getting married? Um, she says they would not get married because of love. It would be a business decision. And Aaron kind of agrees with that. To which Greg is like, he thinks he's just agreeing with Shay. Now, can we just address that? Because, yes, there is a um, a quote-unquote business side, if you will, and I don't like to use that term. But I would say purpose. There's a purpose. There's a, there is Mutual some things purpose. to consider, not only just your relationship, but also financial-wise, what mm-hmm. have you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I get kind of what they're saying, but you don't marry just because it's a good business decision. Because well, if that was, you know, it depending on your culture. I mean, like if you're arranged marriage, yes, so it's good for the family to yes, yes come up. I get that. So now, in perspective, her being American, she from the West Side, Chicago. <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. For her being in America, I need to know what business decision would she stay in this relationship that will benefit both of them? Because if that's the case, y'all can just form an LLC, <laughs> and don't even mean. Getting and he, well, he ain't getting none anyway, right? So y'all might as well. At just least he formalized what he's gonna get out of it, right? And it's in paper. It's, <laughs> it's on, on paper. paper, right? So yeah, because I'm like, dude. I mean, you seem like a good dude. Mm-hmm. So why continue? And it, it's that triangle of we attract, we attract what's what's broken in us mm-hmm. instead of attracting what's our strength. That's, Does that make sense? We sometimes attract our weakness. Yeah. Yeah. The and, area. I, mm-hmm. and and that's going to be exposed here in a little bit. Yeah. But it's just like some things you, it's not you failing. It's just that person didn't want to participate. Right. You got to have participation to be a couple. Yes. <laughs> yes. It does take work, effort, and energy. <laughs> um, but they do say that they are both physically attracted to each other. And from her perspective, from what she said, is that she wanted to try something different. Because I'm assuming, as he shows enough of his chest all day, every day. <laughs> we bro, man, he got his chest unburned to his belly button. <laughs> so, like, he might as well don't wear a shirt. But 
So physically, she's she said pretty much she's saying, you know, I could sleep with him. But I am trying to do something different. Right. Because as we as she said last week, I felt nothing. Right. So right. they do meet with the expert, and this is where the kind of cliffhanger happens for this episode, but we have the other couples to talk about. Um, they do meet with the expert. He does not think the relationship is strong. Mm-hmm. And he kind of acknowledges, they kind of acknowledge the wall that's there, mm-hmm. right? Um, and the question that the expert asked was, you know, how was that first meeting? And she does talk about the awkwardness of that mm-hmm. first meeting. I get that, yeah. Yeah, because it was it was awkward watching. It was like... Oh, it was a train wreck watching. Yeah. So she does ask Aaron to kind of step away and let her talk just to Jody. Yeah, because Jody's answer while Aaron was there, they were just so... Guarded. Guarded. It was shallow. Very brief, very It was empty. Quick. Yep. It was like... Even the therapist was like... You okay? Y'all together? Y'all ain't together. This is not... This is not two people working to join together. Yes. Because the therapist says, are y'all going to be together after this is over? And Jody gave a response like, okay, Aaron, can you go ahead and step right. out? I need <laughs> right. I need to talk to Jody. Because I see her flags like... Because she's like... Do you, you want to even continue to do this? You know what it remind me of? What? Okay, y'all know we have a church background, right? That mm-hmm. we've been in ministry. Mm-hmm. You know how sometimes there have been where all of a sudden you realize, oh, we're dealing with a demon. And you're like, all right, let's get the kids out of here. <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's, listen, if you ain't got to be in here, we're going to deal with this. That's kind of that energy. She was like, oh, that's, oh, oh that's Aaron, go ahead. Is. Aaron, let's go ahead and go out. Listen, Cammy, y'all keep rolling a little bit, but. I don't know what I'm going to have to do here. It was that energy. Oh, my gosh. So we'll see because it looks like, I mean, just, again, next week may be where things come to a head with them as far as if she's not feeling him, she's not feeling him. And this is my thing. For someone who is so guarded and Mm -hmm. say they don't feel anything, but you, at at the moment, you have to admit to someone you don't want to be with them. Now all of a sudden you have feelings. Yeah. And a lot of times that's not about the other person. Right. It's about you. Yeah. It's about admitting that something is wrong and you have to tell somebody. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, you don't have no feelings for him. Right. Then why don't you shut it down? But I also get that she doesn't want to hurt him. But she, okay, but she I, has no I feeling when you I kiss. Get I get it. I get it. I get no it. Feeling. But I get it. <laughs> so you can't say you're concerned about his feelings because all of your actions is hurting him, and she's not getting that. So this is not about him. This is about her. <laughs> so, all right. Because I'm like, dude, just cut it off if you ain't feeling it. If you have no emotion. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's deal with Greg and Millie. Okay. Um, they didn't have a lot of things leading up to the um, the activity. No, Millie was still <laughs> upset about the birthday. Yes, <laughs> but the question, but Greg was a little like, man, I don't know about these activities because last <laughs> time <laughs> I couldn't it's remember. The, me. I, I couldn't it's remember the birthday. Me. I I I thought her favorite activity was women, and it was just some. Um, so they hit him with the question. So Taronda asked him the question, okay, what's her birthday? He's like, I got this one. Right. June 21st, 1990, I think he said. Yeah, yeah. like I wrote it down. He's it's like, I got it's, it's tattooed it's on my hand. That's going to be part of the matching tattoo <laughs> that we might get. All right. So um, they were asked, or they asked Millie how she feels about him being a womanizer. Mm-hmm. And basically it was like, he's like, that's how I was but I'm trying to show forth different energy. Mm -hmm. And she's acknowledging that he's showing forth different energy. Mm -hmm. She does acknowledge that she can be loud Mm -hmm. just a little bit. Um, But it's, again, as we've kind of talked about, it it really probably stems from a lot stems from from her background, from Mm -hmm. the things that have happened to her. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what she uh, alludes to. Yeah, because I get it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need to verbalize. Those are the things you should be verbalizing while you're together. Like, 
we're three years in the same city. Mm -hmm. And you catch me while you're at home, and then you're partying all weekend. Mm -hmm. And so I'm concerned. Now that we've met, you know, when we go back, that means we should be able to date because they're in the same city. Yeah. So nothing should be holding back. So I think she should address that and he should respond, which he did. Mm -hmm. And hopefully he keeps his word. Yeah. So um, they do make a journey to the boom, boom room. Yes, because Greg um, indicated like, hey, I want to be your safe space. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to help to be your protector, mm -hmm. and I'm looking you in the eye, and and so now she's and everyone was encouraging her to put her walls down. Because I'll be honest, when we were watching it initially, um, because of her interaction with someone else a little, mm -hmm. a, a little uh, earlier, I was like, man, Greg probably need to run, mm -hmm. right? I said that, you right? You did. But by the end of the hot seat portion, I was like, okay, there's potential there. Yeah. She just needs to let she just needs to recognize him as a safe space right. and he needs to be that safe space for her. Right. Because once he does that, then I think the hurt, the pain, the trauma is now a she's able to really come forward as who she, mm -hmm. you know, really it may be. Again, mm -hmm. we're we're looking from the outside in. Right. But in those moments, it was like, OK, I can see that because the harsh Millie that was cussing everybody out and, mm -hmm. and battling with Chris. Mm -hmm. Uh uh. But if that's if that's who she is when she's with him mm -hmm. and he's allowing her to have that safe space and she can let those walls down, they can make it. Oh, yeah, because that's why I was like, what do you mean? I was like, again, is that your level of what you can um, handle? Right. Because no one's free from trauma. No. No one's free from having a past. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like they were a good balance mm -hmm. and they understand each other's traumas, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, I think Greg really stepped up to say, I'm acknowledging your fears. I'm mm -hmm. acknowledging that I want to be there for you. Um, and then for her to have the grace. But it's always good when you can have someone that can proxy for you. Right. And Josh, he stepped up in that moment and said, mm -hmm. look, I talked to the dude. And this dude is saying he wants to focus on you. Right. So Greg could say a lot of good things, but I think it was really Josh who I feel like he's a decent guy, right? Right. And that he wouldn't say anything to put Greg out there. That and in the house, just looking at from, from the guys in the house, in the house, he seems to have the respect of every person right. else, except for Diamond, of course. Right. Uh, but he seems to have the respect of everyone else in the house, right? right? So, yes, I think it, that also went a long way to say, mm -hmm. okay, it's not just Greg saying it, Josh is saying Josh it as well. Josh is saying it as well. So I think that helped him to, to get the walls down mm -hmm. And for them to have that time, you know, to increase their intimacy. Right. And they got intimate in the boom, boom room. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I heard they did a lot of talking. Wink, wink. <laughs> All right. <laughs> a lot of clapping. All right. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's deal with Chris and Sandia. Mm hmm. So, again, we don't really see much of them until the, um, the hot seat because mm -hmm. that actually kind of happened early anyway. Mm -hmm. But. Um, they do say that they are working on their communication, mm -hmm. right? Um, which is important, mm -hmm. and for them, it's going to be key. Mm -hmm. um, but he does make some statements that it was like, bruh. He, he's a hurt man. Yes. I'm like, your hurt is screaming so loud. Yes. Because <laughs> he says he will never spend too much time on a woman until she proves worthy. What is that time frame? And what does that mean as far as spending too much time? I mean, like, I I would love to hear this eight-year relationship. That's like, the story that needs to be told. That's the story that needs to be told. Like, were y'all together every day? Were y'all living together? Were y'all families living together? Like, I mean. The way he, he said something, and it was like, 
her and the family. So it was like it was yeah. like he was invested in the family. Yeah, like and all of a sudden his his mom in love. Right. It, yeah. And the and the dad. I like I don't know if he lost his parents, but there seems such a deep bond. Yes. And I know um he brings up his Haitian heritage. And I don't know I don't know too much about Haitians. As a culture. You know, right? as a culture, but he it it was like he has a soul tie. He, he, he got some hurts, some pains. So, yeah. So then Diamond and Aaron, the pot stirrers, do ask, well, ask Sandia, how does it feel she being controlled by a man? Again, we're looking at someone else's dynamic and thinking they're controlling them because she's a, a lot more passive. Right. Um, um, in her approach, and he's more abrasive. Mm-hmm. So that can give that illusion, that impression, yep. that impression of that. But she was very clear mm-hmm. that he's not controlling anything concerning her. Yep. He then makes statements that it was like, okay, now I see why you and your boy last week are best friends. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Because he's like, well, you know, women just make bad decisions. Um, they're bad decision makers because they make out of emotion. And yes, I think anyone above the level of of 11th grade recognizes that there are differences in how men and women approach things. Mm-hmm. Yes, men, we do approach things more logically. Women do tend to approach things more without with the emotion. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make it bad or wrong. It just basically is two sides of the coin that in many respects, especially if you're talking relationships, Sometimes you'll have to make those decisions. Now, there are some decisions in our relationship that logically we've made decisions. Mm-hmm. There have been others that it's like, mm, this just feels better to me. Right. right? Um, and both have worked out. Both have failed. Right. That's both true. options. Right. That's true. So it's not a matter of the logical decisions always work out because they don't or that the emotional decisions always work out because they don't. It is, especially if you're talking about a couple making the decision that you feel is best and then being able to live with the decision and the consequences and I think or that's, the outcomes. And I think they didn't solidify about making decisions. Cause I think the best question should be asked is that, are you saying that you're only going to make the decisions in the relationship right. or is it going to be a combination? Because when you can have a combination of emotions and logic mm-hmm. in the situation, then we come into agreement right. that's best for both parties. Yes. So needless to say, though, he ticked all the women off. Every last one of them. Even Toronto was like, wait, let me take off my host and hat for a moment. Yeah. Let me set you straight, young man. All right. So, <laughs> so she, she, she's now because he, he said something that I was like, I get what you're saying. Right. Because what she said was, if a man gives me uh, something to work gives with. Gives a home, we make it a house. Right. If he gives seed, we bring forth a child. Right. right. So, okay. All that sounds good. And he was like, okay, but where'd you get it from? And she was like, wait, what? He's like, you saying you can take all this stuff, you can make it great, but where'd you get it from? Well, we we need each other. Yes. So I get what he was saying. It was just kind of funny. He was like, and, it went out, and, and I was like, hold on. We were talking about making decisions. How we get here from making decisions? And so I think it got kind of lost in the sauce yes. of what we were trying to get at. Yes. Because they should have stayed focused on communicating. So needless to say, there is, and I think for Chris, I'm not going to call it immaturity. I think it's operating out of hurt. Oh, yeah. I think that eight-year relationship is something that really needs to be dug into. Um, And then when they do meet with the relationship coach, he does acknowledge that he runs away from emotional situations, probably due to the eight-year relationship. Mm -hmm. So he's acknowledging, and I I do think that he is making the effort, but sometimes his hardwired trauma, if you will, mm-hmm. is screaming louder in his ear than <laughs> reality or, or common sense or whatever you want to pull it. And because we don't know, right? Mm-hmm. You know, hypothetical, let's say this way. Mm-hmm. When he met him when he met the previous relationship, it might have been out of emotion. And he could be a very logical person. It's like that didn't work, so let me just go ahead and stick into the logic. Right. So maybe he maybe he was thinking logically, this person might not be good for me, but emotionally she is. That's possible. And 
eight years because he said he wasted time, right? Yes. So now he spent eight years based off of his emotion with mm-hmm. someone and it didn't work and it was devastating. He lost everything. So he was like, well, screw my emotions right. because it cost me time. It cost me energy because mm-hmm. these are the words he's saying. Right. Time, energy, mm-hmm. you know, she she did something to him and left him when he put all this effort in. And so now he's like, logically, this is going to help me to be like he, like he Captain Kurt. I mean, uh, uh, what's the... John Lou Picard. Uh, who was the one that was just logical? Who was the... Picard was logical. No, with the ears. Oh, Spock. Spock. Okay. So, you know, he only supposed to... <laughs> For all of our Star Trek fans and family, yes. <laughs> he was only logical, right? He yes. had to suppress all his emotion. Yes. <laughs> that is what I'm getting at. Yes. And so here he is, but... She's willing to work through it. Mm-hmm. And he's willing to say, I'm trying to put sex off the table or not make it the first thing I want to do. Right. Because he sees something in Sandia. And that's her patience. <laughs> yes. So. All right. Let's deal with Diamond and Aaron. All right. Okay. Um, so Shay does, uh, again, after they've had some things, uh, mm-hmm. focusing now on Shay and Di- or Diamond and Aaron rather. Shay calls Aaron a manipulator, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and because when he jumps into the conversations, um, he says that he has been through quadruple the relationships they have been through. So let me help you understand something what you just told us. <laughs> you want to give advice to everybody on their relationship, but you've been in multiple relationships that haven't worked. I was like, this is not a good example. That's not, that's not, that's, that's not the flex you think it is. No, not at all. I was like, what? <laughs> so, and I'll talk because I, I had to do a little dig because I'll just say this. Diamond and Aaron, not just in the show, but just on social media, right? Mm-hmm. Just to kind of step outside of the show for just a moment. Mm-hmm. On social media, they are striking me as the couple that is trying to maximize their five seconds of fame. I don't blame them. Um, I don't blame them for that. Right. But I think that they, because there's some things about them that it's it's almost as if this is what they're considering their shot. That would make sense. And this is, they, they want to become the next reality villain, if you will, because diamond and Aaron both have in social media made statements to the effect of, well, you know, this makes for good drama and every good TV show needs good drama and the villain is just as important as the hero. So it's like they t- they came into this really. And so this, this now colors how I view how they're doing different things is because now you're coming in with the goal and the intent, not necessarily of building a relationship, but really making yourself known on TV, which then calls me into question mm-hmm. whether the relationship is really authentic and real or if it is something that they just maybe were friends and decided to come on the show and pretend that they were friends, pretend that they were a relationship. Because, again, there are things that Shay has said in her accusations mm-hmm. on this show mm-hmm. and, yes, in, in real life that now, to me, give pause to say, does Shay know that maybe this was just a manufactured storyline? Because she does make statements about, you know, no man having behind. So... I say this, it's not uncommon. It's not. And it's happened in other reality TV but shows. But others have done it have been a, have done a better job in my opinion of covering their tracks. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, but the point is, right? Mm-hmm. However they decided to portray themselves, it's not in a good light. At all. Right? right. And so they've made that decision. And so they're on the show. Mm-hmm. They're saying they're in a relationship. And so that's all we have to go off of, True. right? Now, what they've said now, because we've come to the conclusion, this show was taped two years ago, mm-hmm. which I get it. Sometimes it's not ready. This is a very perfect climate of that because we've yes. had the pandemic. We've mm-hmm. we've we've been isolated. Mm-hmm. So this is a great time to bring this type of show, you know, for us to look at. Yeah. Now, as far as how they're portraying it, I think it has to be in you. It has to be a part of your character. So you're saying if messiness is in you, messiness is what comes out. It's going to come out. If toxicity is what's in you, toxicity is what's it, comes it's gonna out. It's going to come out. And so. And I'm not cursing, but if, 
if if BA is in you, it's yeah. BA is what's coming out. It's of gonna you. come out of you. So BA, BS. Mm-mm, BA. Oh, okay. And so A female dog booty. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, some of y'all. <laughs> I'm not cursing, but some of y'all got me. Okay. So with that being the case, it's easy for you now to put on that persona mm-hmm. of that of that person, no mm-hmm. matter where they are in that in that place. Right. So. If you're going to um, try to capitalize on it, hey, we live in a capitalist uh, capitalism country, so do you. Yeah. But don't allow that for you to hurt other people that are actually here to say, mm-hmm. I met someone online I won't, and I'm finally trying to meet them mm-hmm. and destroy other people's relationship. Yes. There should be a line that you don't cross. There should be. So, so, so back to the hot seat for them. Um Basically, they're saying that no one has heard her say that she loves him. Um, there's the accusations that he's using her and other women for money. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Aaron J, basically, so Aaron H is like, you know, y'all don't see it because she don't be around y'all. Aaron J is like, wait, so you mean you realize <laughs> that just because you don't see it, other things can be happening and that could be truthful? Well, we're going to stay out of everybody's business because we don't get in everybody's business is what Aaron H. said. And then production was like, let's give the receipts. They start Roll that receipts. beautiful bean footage. <laughs> <laughs> they start showing footage from the very beginning that they sitting up here pretending to be therapists and coming on and talking to everybody there in everybody's relationship and again i say this when you don't have a relationship you're going to put yourself in everybody else's relationship and that's why a lot of a lot of them are feeling maybe they don't really have a relationship <laughs> oh my god so there was a moment where greg mimics aaron and it was spot on i was laughing uh diamond calls shay a child mm, i think i think you're self-projecting again because of the two I'm going to say that the child-like behavior comes more for Diamond and Aaron's side, right? Mm-hmm. And can we talk about that room? No. I No. Well, I'm going to just say, clean that room. No. Nope. Clean it. All right. Nope. We'll, nope. I'm going to move on because I know. Move on. I know, I know, move your, on. I know your thoughts. Mm. All right. <laughs> All right. Who did a move on? He's about to go in tongue. <laughs> Trying to hold my tongue. Making skin crawl. All right. So uh, Shay does say, y'all are weird, mad, and old. And in everybody's business. Um, Aaron says that they were only worried about their relationship. And he's going to stop giving advice because it's not working. Newsflash, yes. So the other thing that happened with them is her daughter comes. Yes. Um, and so he says he needs to redeem himself with her daughter because he mm-hmm. made the error with the sister. Mm-hmm. Which you still need to redeem yourself regarding the sister. Yeah, because that's Period. A close. She loves her sister. Now, <sighs> the daughter is, you know, she's like, I'm not sure about this. This seems kind of sudden. Yes, it's five years, but again, right. it's been five years virtual. Do right? you love her or do you love her? Right. Um, Find out also now, instead, in addition to him just being in quadruple relationships, he has six <laughs> kids. He said it. And he's been married twice. Yes. He says the first time he married early when he was in his 20s. Right. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you that one. I may give you that one. We married when we were, what, 22 and 24, I think it was? No. Yeah. No. I was 24. You were, No. Yeah. You were 23. I was 21. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If mm-hmm. we'll, we'll we'll do the math later. Yeah. All right. But but so that's not necessarily that's not a, a disqualifier is my point. Is that just because you marry at in your early 20s does not to automatically disqualify well, and say give you an excuse as to why the relationship failed. Well, he's indicated uh currently and was he saying that he wasn't mature? Because there has to be a maturity when you get married. True. So he was saying he was young. So I'm saying I'm assuming he's saying he was young in the in the mind. Okay. So, so I, I give him his his age has gotten better, but has his Exactly. Okay. So so I'ma give him that he was young then. Young then <laughs> and young still. Right. And so two marriages is now gone. 
And so he's trying to work on a third one. So exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's where right. we are. <laughs> um, long story short, the daughter gives her blessing. Right. Secondly, did also because what's her name? Diamond got up to get she something said, to drink and eat, right? Well, she said, I'm gonna go get you something to drink. She said, Can I get something to eat? I'm hungry. And all of a sudden, Diamond comes back. I don't see the baby got no nothing to drink or no food. Not even a breath, man. She ain't giving that. Bre- now I don't know if they cut the scene right. or what. But she she had nothing in her hand. Right. You know, I would say, I would like, hey, let me give y'all a moment to talk. To, again, let's just be organic, mm-hmm. right? Just mm-hmm. like like I, I told you, I said the child drove up there. Like everybody else came had like a driver, this child left in her Honda Civic. So I don't know. I'm like, where did she come from? Does she live there? So that was a little <laughs> off-putting to me. Yeah, see, we pay attention sometimes to just most random stuff. It was like the child just drove off in a Honda. Like she got off work and came up there. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, Mama, like, I got off a little early. I'm going to come see you and this new boyfriend. Because I was like, how did she get an extra visitor? Everybody else only got one visitor. So maybe she's living in town. So, so but I am I was like this, from a child, from a daughter's aspect, you know, there's so much you could try to tell your mm-hmm. parent. And I I see her intentions being good, trying to make sure. Right. You know, and then obviously Aaron's trying to put on the airs for you know, um, the daughter, because I'm like, this ain't going to hold up. The true you going to come out. But granted, you know, only thing she can say, okay, mom, it's, it's all sounds good. And let me just, it all sounds good. At some point, because the way he's he's talking to her at some at some points, like a almost, child, right? Like, he's like belittling, like, right? Like she's immature. seven years old, right? And he's like, I may be your new daddy. The girl is 19. You, right. she ain't got to deal with you except when y'all, you know, right. she come. It's she not, come and it's drive little, up to the house. Right, when she get off work. It's <laughs> not like, it's a different dynamic. And it's he's a different putting dynamic. her in a, the dynamic of she's like seven or ten. A small child yeah. instead of an adult but child. But that's, that's kind of how he views because he's 51 and he's he's got more life experience. All right, anyway. Yeah. Um, I wish them best. <laughs> so that's all I can say is that... Hopefully, when they went while it's airing, that they can gain some knowledge to grow and mature. You know, um, a lot of people don't get the opportunity to to meet people. So I would like to see the show again. Um, Oh, you wouldn't care to see the show again? I'd have I have more questions. I have questions that this show has not really answered. Mm. So one, the the better, right? No, what I understand, they're not doing a reunion. Oh, okay. Um, But there are questions as far as, again, I don't understand 12 years in a relationship and y'all have never seen each other in person. Um, So there there are things like that. There's the vetting because now there's so much. and, And understand, again, we know every show there are people that manipulate their way to get on mm-hmm. shows. Mm-hmm. But some of the stuff that's coming out about this cast, because um, they said, I uh, saw something else that said Alexis actually is married to somebody else. So there's a lot of stuff that's happening with this show. <laughs> While she was on, bring it, yes. and she brought another dude that she... Yes. Well, she didn't and, meet the dude and, online, right? <laughs> well, but again, the other thing is that he they've both been on social media saying that they were just friends and they were faking it for the show as well oh wow so there's lots that that this cast is just like wow. it's been a little interesting so i don't know that i would necessarily like to see this show on a second episode or mm-hmm. a second se- season or whatever mm-hmm. so we'll take it for what it is it is what it is it is what it is and it was what it was well and granted there are people that are dating on absolutely on social media yeah and i get that mm-hmm. i, I would want to see those genuine ones yeah i don't know that there are some I think that may be genuine out of this. Oh yeah. And I, for example, I think Jody and Aaron probably are genuine. Right. And so we're seeing kind of that really play out. Right. I think Greg and Millie. I still don't get how that you live in the same city, L.A. for three years, and so I, I get that. I don't get that. But so that's just me. That's it for this one. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know what we might have missed, and we'll see you in the comments. We'll see y'all next time. Have a great one. Be blessed. Bye.